Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos, and this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step two, step two, step two, to step two. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry it's been a while. I have had a crazy amount of problems uh, the last few days, and uh, mainly my computer uh, acted up and I couldn't install certain things that I needed. And then as stuff progressed, it just was like uh, major problems, Will Robinson, major problems. And so I ended up with the MSI EXE C dot EXE error. And you can't really reinstall your MSI EXE C. Uh, you really can't. You can try to and fail. You can try to disable it as well and fail. Uh, so, yeah. So dealing with that and a few other weird situations here. Um, this week of uh, family friends funeral uh, and uh, Easter and so uh, all this to combined has uh, created a very interesting uh, setup so what I'm going to mainly just do is uh, like a while I was out sort of roundup and uh, sort of go from there uh, because I I know that some people might be saying like, well, Dark Logos, what do you think of this? And what do you think of this other thing? And this fifth thing that happened and all these other superpowers and figures and stuff that came out. Um, really, my my viewpoint on, on most of this, uh, we're going to get into the show uh, and, and we're going to see about that. And then we'll see how it hits. OK, and I'm mainly just going to talk primarily most of the show about the lamp, the power batteries and why they're dumb. And so uh, with that positive note, uh, let's get going. Uh, you might be thinking like, okay, hold up, wait, you're just automatically coming off, you know, negative. And I'm like, mm, yeah, yes, I am. And, and here's why. In particular, the power batteries in and of themselves for any smart player playing against them has so many disadvantages in comparison to the power plant or the utility belts or even, you know, I know this is going to sound stupid, the bat cave that you're sort of left just wondering why am I playing these other than the fact that these are going to be the only things left in modern age after retirement after a period of time but at no point in time are they going to exist in a world without the power plant just you know scouts on i said scouts scouts honor wow scouts honor it's just not going to happen and we're looking at we're looking at some weirdness and you're gonna say like hey man Look at all the constructs that we don't know about yet. And I'm still going to say like, yeah, man, there's a lot of constructs out there. And all it's going to do for a, brief period, a very brief period of time is increase the value of Selena Kyle so that you can just steal the relics and resources off of your opponent. That's it. So you're, you run Selena Kyle in a power plant where you can just disintegrate and ray uh, your opponent, get rid of their power battery and completely hose them over and they lose all of their uh, constructs and you get a free however amount of points that they spent on their power battery. So yeah, uh, that is not really good. Uh, so let's let's sort of get get into the meat and potatoes of why my perspective is the way it is and why I, I'll point out the silver linings and I'll point out like, man, this is dumb. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. First off, uh, with the force construction, the power battery must be assigned a power ring. Well, guess what? The only way you're going to get a ring is inside of War of Light boosters and good luck trying to find a full set on eBay afterward. <laughs> That's going to suck. 
if you thought power plant, uh, power plant rings were going to be annoying to pay for, these are definitely going to be annoying uh, to pay for uh, at the at definitely on month one and two. Month three, it might be a little bit easier. Month four, five, and six, yeah, it's going to be good. By by that time, you're already past Gen Con. So the, hey, man, I might be the next world champion sort of luster has worn off. Uh, so people are just like, okay, let me try to get this. But the problem comes in is in September, we get the rest of the power batteries in which everyone's like, oh, all those rings I hoarded up, I need, I can sell them now with a, a battery. And so I can, you know, charge ridiculous amounts of money. So that's that's the future. So I would tell you, actually, if you're going to do War of Light, play for a couple of months or a couple of venues, get as many rings as you can, you know, that first month uh, and determine our rings in every package. If it rings are in every package, guess what? The inherent value of the rings are going to be very low. But if they're if if the rings are like every other booster or you know, not every booster, then yeah, the rings value is going to definitely be maintained the entire time. But anyway, uh, going on. Um, so once the power batteries are out and about, uh, the cost and ridiculousness is going to be increased. Uh, so that's the first thing. Next thing is, uh, the power battery costs two points, which is low introductory cost. Plus the combined cost of assigned power ring and constructs, it must total a minimum of 16 points. Power ring and constructs are all attached to the power battery at the beginning of the game. So the good news is, is that it just sort of looking, you're probably going to get like one or two constructs at minimum for playing your, your power battery and your ring. And so you're going to have something to be armed up with. So there's, there's some positiveness there. Okay. Then uh, corpse members, blah, blah, blah. It, Really, it's this is where the part I'm going to call shenanigans right now on uh, with the corpse members. Like when a friendly character has any constructs on its card, it's called a corpse member and is and is assigned the power battery. Friendly corpse members can use the ability of the constructs on its card and the ability of the power ring attached to the power battery. If a friendly corpse member is KO'd, any constructs on its card are reattached to the power battery. If the power battery is KO'd, all constructs are removed from friendly corpse members. This is the part that sucks, and this is why you're going to be, like, crying against the power plant with a disintegration beam. Uh, so, the fact that if you can lose your, your power battery, you can lose your constructs, unlike if you lose your Book of Your Skull, you don't lose uh, your already assigned hammers. Uh, or if you lose your power plant, you know, if you do have any rings out, you don't, you don't lose them. Um, that's a problem. Okay. So, uh, there's in, in looking at them trying to balance it. And again, this is a balance attempt. Uh, this is the beginning of the depowering of resources. That's really it. It's just the depowering of resources. Now, if some people might say like, Hey, these, these, this is still pretty strong. Dark logos keep going, keep going. If you look at how much you're potentially spending and in the point ranges that you're at, even not e even while not seeing the constructs, it's quite evident that these things are a lot weaker than the power plant, the infinity gauntlet, and the book of the skull, or even the utility belt. Okay. And so what they've done is they've tried to, they tried to hear the complaints of the consumer base and create something that fits and works with their model of interaction now, while at the same time uh, creating something that people won't feel bad about playing. Um, it's, it's a real bad idea or it's a really bad sign to game design if there's an element that no one likes but you really need for your business model. And no matter what you tweak or try to do, people still don't like what you're doing. Like that's a big problem. Okay. So this is them taking step three of, okay, let's, let's deal with this again. All right. 
And this, this to me, with the corpse members thing, it's it's the bad move. It's it's the bad move, in in my opinion, because now with his over uh, arching, um, yeah, here we go with its overarching phrases. If the power battery is KO'd, all constructs are removed from friendly corpse members' cards. Now, why is this an issue in addition to what I've said previously? Okay, there's these wonderful characters uh, that uh, were introduced in Slosh. I don't, I don't know if you've, you've heard of at least one of them, and, and, and her name is Black Witch. And for a very hefty price, Black Witch brings in relics from outside of the game so that you can play on your force. And um, to my knowledge, since it just says constructs, and if I decided to bring in a, you know, a construct, you know, to help me out, even though it didn't initially start attached to the base under the general wording that it has there, uh, yeah, I would lose it. Now, again, hopefully I am completely wrong. Like I've been so many other times before in the past, okay? Like, trust me, I am not going to toot my own horn on this one if if I'm right, okay? But that's a that's a concern, you know. You you have a figure in which if if you actually like, <laughs> it, it, sorry, you ha- you have a resource in which if you able to use this other figures. Uh, general effect then you know all of a sudden uh you you almost get punished for playing that other figure and that that to me is is sort of suck uh the other character is mordu because mordu can bring in uh can can bring in i think can bring in other objects as well um and this is this is the part where it's like okay mordu I know you're there, and then, yeah, because you're, yeah, I knew he was a super rare. Okay, yeah, so number 56, Mordu, and he's able to, like, mystical relics, when Mordu makes a relic roll, no, 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 what's, what is it? Give Mordu a free action, standard attack power. Mordu can use their power beginning of your turn. Mordu can use Invincible. Blah, 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 blah. I know he has an ability that allows him to bring in relics. Um, Mordu can power action. When he does take damage, you may replace him. Mystical relics. When Mordu makes relic roll, result plus two once per game. Give Mordu a double power action to place a relic 50. All right, here we go. Yeah, uh, give him a double power action, place a relic 15 points or less from outside the game in in his square. So, Mordu has the ability to like, hey, homie, I decided I need a Green Lantern construct. And I'm running the power battery because I took over Oa. Ha 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 Okay, so, now you just disintegration beamed, you know, the, all the, uh, some other guy. And now you lose your construct you brought in. Sucks for you, man. Sucks for you. All right, so let's let's go back. It, again, with the chorus member thing, it doesn't say anything that, hey, all this bad stuff only really happens to constructs that start off on the base. Now, again, I'm going to read it through again. When a friendly character has any constructs on its card, it's called a corpse member and is assigned the power battery. Okay, it, they, they completely forget that, hey, man, there's other ways to get constructs on you. Okay, friendly corpse members can use the ability of the constructs on its card and the ability of the power ring attached to the power battery. Again, you don't, you could just bring in a, a construct from outside the game. It doesn't see, say it has to be attached. If a friendly course member is KO by any constructs on his card. It uh, it's uh, ugh, KO any constructs on his card are reattached to the power battery. Okay, 
If the power battery is KO'd, all constructs are removed from friendly course members. So it's just something to, to be mindful of. Anyway, going on to the setup, during the beginning of the game, the power battery is placed in four squares of clear terrain. This is where they jacked up because you can say like, hey, welcome to, to Waterworld from Fear Itself. Uh, I am Kevin Costner and you are now screwed. Uh, just all honesty. Uh, and then they're still going to rules lawyer it around as much as they can, but game design jacked up. And then unless game design says something else, then yeah, as it stands, you can't put it legally on a couple of maps. So there is a problem right there. The power battery affects line of fire. Can use uh, its powers and abilities. Uh, can use its powers and abilities. Um, is damaged and KO'd as if it were as if it were a character. It doesn't say it's a character, which is great, but it doesn't say it's an object either. So it, it can't be like eaten by matter eating lad or uh, what is it, uh, cyborg Superman. So that's good. Or nanobots if you play Golden Age. Okay. Characters, objects, and blocking terrain may not occupy uh, the se- uh, the same squares as the power battery. Okay, but it doesn't say hindering, which is sort of weird. Uh, game design. The power battery is immediately KO'd when the last friendly character is defeated. So there you go. Next, attacking the power battery. This is this is the part where it's like, yay, they give you some insurance that you're not going to get just owned or, or taken out real quickly. And uh, here we go. Attacking the power battery. If the power battery is adjacent to an opposing character or within its range in line of fire, okay, that character may be given a power action to roll 2d6 to add to their attack roll, uh, attack value. Now, the one thing I think the Dial H guys brought up is that you can't like use running shot or hypersonic speed or anything like that because you have to be given a power action uh, to do this. You're you're giving with running shot. You're you're giving a power action to do a ranged combat uh, attack or action as a free action or something like that. I forgot uh, off the top of my head, people. Just off the top of my head, I forgot is action or attack. Just sorry. Uh, if the result anyway, going back, um, you can see that you have to sort of be in place or get TK'd up. So that's okay. If the value uh, also. Um, if, sorry, if the result is equal to or higher than power barrier's defense, it takes damage equal to the opposing character's printed damage value minus two. This can't be ignored. So this means that if you have a guy, his printed damage is three, you're going to do one damage to it if you smack it. You can't perplex up or do anything else uh, to affect the how much damage you're going to do to the power battery. <laughs> At the same time, what gets really cool is you are now in this position where if someone like perplex down your damage or anything like that, then it, it's not an issue. It's just whatever your printed value is. Now, characters like Galactus and Tester and Anti Monitor and all these other big guys that do ridiculous amounts of damage with multi attack. Where normally there would be like some sort of modifier or, or whatever else. You can't use multi-attack and do this because you have to be given a power action. You can't do a power action to do this other thing. To my knowledge. Now, again, I could be wrong. Been wrong in the past. Uh, but again, this isn't an attack. But if you're going to be given a power action through multi-attack to do... Power action as a free action, okay. That's, you know, that might be legal as well. But right now, I I really do think most likely they're going to say, like, you can't use, like, multi-attack or something like that uh, to attack the power battery twice. But bigger guys that are able to do more damage just make the whole situation more awesome uh, in trying to take it out. But since the battery is 20 quick clicks deep, you do, if, if you're looking at 10 attacks to KO the power battery to get whatever feeble points that you're you're doing, if you have four damage, okay, so you have four damage, means you're going to be knocked down to two. 
then you're going to have to do 10 attacks. Now think about that. That's that's 20 damage. 20 damage that is no longer against opposing figures. That is 20 damage that is against this sorry, that's 40 damage really total that is used to destroy this power battery. That's freaking ridiculous. You have no incentive whatsoever to start smacking this sucker. The only reason you have any incentive to start smacking it is if your opponent pushes it. And we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, power uh, battery powers. Um, The dial of the power battery indicates certain special powers it can use in the freaking light up form or we'll just say sun everybody's calling it a sun uh slots once per turn when it's given an action to use one of these powers and the actions resolve you may roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled deal the power battery half of the results as unavoidable damage so that's pretty cool so you can use little sun things to turn it uh now the other issue when you look at like the little sun powers is that the sun powers in all honesty i think they're useful if you're just trying to get more stuff i think they are not useful when you actually sort of look at what they do to an extent and that's that's sort of my problem because you can't consistently use some of the effects like you can with the book of the skull or with the power plant. So automatically right there, there's some issues. And I do think it is sort of interesting that in, in all honesty, that the use of a resource now is no longer really for an individual, it's for a team. So I do think that's that's interesting. But anyway, going on, let's look at these special powers and traits. Uh permeate the universe the power battery's range is equal to its click number so that's fine uh what this does mean though uh at the more you push it the better off you are but at the same time you're just giving incentive for your opponent to just be like uh yeah we're coming for you and we're going to start attacking it the other problem really comes in is that you're really going to have to like grind it down. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to grind it down a lot uh, so that you can get to a point where the range is actually usable. Because you're not able to just say like, hey man, all of my homies get to use prob or outwit or perplex. It doesn't work like that. Anyway, uh, then you get your emotional spectrum I do got to say fear is pretty awesome because if you team up fear with colossals, they become really OP um, because they're going to be the uh, I'll I'll read fear real quick. Emotional spectrum fear. If the power battery uh, attached, sorry, if the power battery attached power ring and constructs are all the same color, opposing characters modify their attack values by minus two when targeting a friendly course member with a higher point value. Well, guess what? If you are 600 points, there are very few characters that are higher points than you. And then you say, hey, homie, you all have minus two attack when targeting me. And guess what? I have uh, gravity uh, feed Doctor Strange give me energy shield deflection. So I have plus two defense and you have minus two attack and I add another perplex on top of that. And now we're sitting here in absurd land and you can't really have a chance to hit me. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Uh, hope you enjoy the veal. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, so anyway, each different one is going to have a different ability or whatever. Um, personally, I think the fear one is pretty boss, but it's only it's very situational. I think all of them are going to be situational. But other than the ring and the constructs, that's really the only unique thing. Everything else for the rest of the batteries are going to be quite standard. Next is the special power. Use a construct. Give the power battery a free. A- sorry, give the power battery a power action. Place an attack's construct on a friendly character's card that isn't already a corpse member. So that's good. 
So you can just be like, boop, bloop, I'm going to just hand out this stuff here and take some colossal pushing. Uh, next is uh, swap a construct. Give the power battery a free action, exchange a construct between two friendly corpse members uh, cards uh, or the power battery and a friendly corpse member card. So, you know, if you're going through the battle, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I need this now and just, you know, swap it out. So you get some of the, the flexibility of of the of the power plant, but it's really you you can't just like quadruple up like a lot of people do with the rings. Like, have you ever seen a game where a person's like, I'm going to give this person the Electro Blast ring, then the Flame Blast ring, then the Materia Ranger ring, and then I'm going to give them the uh, Disintegration Beam. And it's like, TK them out, running shots, Psychic Blast, Energy Explosion. Did I hit a 10? Boom, I hit a 10. Destruction. Yeah, so, anyway. Going on, uh, form a construct. Give the power battery a power action. Remove a construct from it and replace it with a construct from outside the game up to two points higher than the one removed. Uh, if the construct is a lower point value, this is a free action. Instead, if the new construct is a higher point value, this is a double power action instead. Again, this allows you mainly just to keep pushing so that you can get down that dial. That's, that's really all this is for. Uh, and then also try to allow you to sort of adapt uh, to the situation that you're at. So you're getting some of that Batman, those lessons that they learned from the utility belt. Except they're they're giving it to you in the middle of the game. And they're giving it to you, you know, down the dial. So you're not easily getting to it anytime soon. Like you're going to, your your initial plan is in play. So it's going to at least take you uh, six or seven turns uh okay one two three four five six seven yeah seven turns at earliest to get to number three power okay so actually what the heck yeah there we go number three power anyway uh, share a construct, give the power battery a free action to roll a D6 that can't be re-rolled if a construct is attached to the power battery. In the slot indicated by the result, all friendly course members can use that ability, uh, use the ability of that construct until your next turn. Now, that can be sort of cool, but unfortunately, that is really dumb luck. And it doesn't give you an advantage at all. Because let's say... You have a freaking power glove out and uh, scissors out and pack out. Okay, the pack of, of wolves things. Okay, or velociraptors. Okay, so you got all three of those out. And you're feeling good about yourself. And that slots one, two, and three. And you, at, out of six, you now have a 50-50 chance of not getting jack of what you paid for and so, to me, number four is really bad. Now, if you're doing, hey, look at me, one-man army, then, yeah, it's going to be, you know, one out of six, you know, a chance of, you know, one out of six of missing. So then, yeah, it could be sort of like, hey, guys, this is awesome. So, really, four is there if you want to run one or two figures, and it doesn't really help you if you're running more than that it starts to be risky so you're paying for risk right there people and that's not good but again it's balanced uh master uh constructs give the power battery a free action place an attached construct on a course member's card oh well never mind so you can double up on five but let's see okay Five, you're already looking at way, way, way down the dial. Number 16. So that's a bit of a concern. Um, so, yeah, that's that's not good. Now, the other thing that is sort of funny is that you get barrier, but the thing, the... 
Let's see. Give uh, duh, 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 free action place. Con- okay, there we go. Master of Constructs is way down the line. Then we get number six, which is improved constructs. Friendly course members modify combat values by plus one for each construct on the character card. Uh, now, here's here's the thing. You get to six, your power battery is about to blow the hell up. And then you pretty much just give an incentive to your to your opponent to say, come attack this sucker now. And the one thing that is sort of cool is that from the way that it's stated, once you get to five, there's no limitation to the amount of constructs that you can put on a character or corpse members or whatever the heck. So let's say your power battery does get all the way down to five. Let's yeah, let's say five. Your main goal from that point out is pure and simple, pass out as many constructs as you can because six is coming. And once six shows up, because again, they can't knock it past six. They have to land on six unless they have a ridiculous amount of damage printed. And highest printed value in the game, I think, is six. And so you would do four yeah so let's see one two three four yeah you still can't do it so definitely get as many of those things out as you can uh and so then at the end it it has like the special power of like hey recharge your ring power battery can you support as if it had an attack value of 10 which is sort of cool but in all honesty you don't really need that You know, at the beginning, it's sort of nice, like, I can run and I have a medic. You know, that's one thing, one less thing you have to pack, which is nice. But still, like, eh, it's not the best thing. I I really, really, really wish you didn't have that. Wish you had something else that was awesome. The periodic barrier is nice defensively, but really only, like, early on, only thing it helps you is if you're dealing with a hyper aggro team. And they're coming after you. And that's it. So let's let's really, you know, break this down um, on really how I feel. Uh, I still don't think that this is a good idea. Uh, I think that we're really just looking at I can really, 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 really abuse the emotional spectrum effect uh, of a lantern. Or the combination of a lantern and yeah, pretty much a combination of a ring and constructs is more powerful than whatever, because you got to understand that your emotional spectrum only kicks in if the power battery attached power ring and constructs are all the same color. Okay. That's it. And and it says that on, on each of them. If the power battery attached, sorry, attached power ring and constructs are all the same color. So really, if you want to like mix and match and all that other stuff, then it's just flavor text. It's, I mean, the lantern is really, it doesn't matter. So I'm, I'm going to call some things really quickly. Uh, and and some of you can call, you know, BS on me or not. It's It's up to you. I will say, first off, <clears throat> due to the limited nature of constructs, we'll start off with, we'll have nothing but green ones anyway until September. And then once we hit September, it's going to be mix and match. Once people realize how dumb mix and match is, then we're going to start seeing tactics that are based around a certain lantern. And then once you, what's going to happen is, is people are going to say, Oh, wow, you have a orange lantern. I really need to be careful about my construct placement because you have the ability to steal standard powers uh, from my dial. Okay. If, if you're going to say, oh, look, uh, there's the indigo lantern. Uh, they have, or no, they would be more likely to steal standard powers. Of, uh, you, it, let's just say with the sapphire, star sapphires, you would just be able to say, oh, look, 
they can create a uh, a truce between two opposing figures as long as the target opposing figure is less points than uh, the corpse member that's being targeted. You know, something like that. You know, people are going to start knowing, like, what's up. So if you see, like, High Father and Sta- Star Sapphire Lantern, or let me rephrase that. If you see Star Sapphire Lantern, you can be like, oh, yeah, there's most likely a High Father team over there. You, you sort of see what I'm going at. So anyway, uh, all in all, this is going to be interesting once they reveal what all the lanterns can do i think them waiting to september is their sort of last like tally ho of let's milk this for one last go around and that's going to be a little bit frustrating but uh the way it seems that if you're at a larger venue you will be able to get the lanterns that you want just make sure you're there day one and and i would actually say if you're serious about getting all the lanterns after they're reviewed please 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 budget i am not a proponent of going broke over hero clicks budget put your pennies in the jar put your you know skip a coke or your latte and just be like this one's for you know the corpse and when the time comes around you'll have your money unlike other people who'll be like oh oh i want them why did whiz kids make them so expensive it's not like i didn't have enough months to prepare to buy them but again, you know, I understand trouble happens, you go broke, you know, lose your job, whatever, like feed yourself and your kids and your spouse before you go buy clicks, pay your bills, all that. That's Dark Logos' seal of approval right there. OK. You know, things get bad enough, sell your dang clicks. You know, life is not about hero clicks. I know it sounds weird for me coming from this podcast, but life is not about hero clicks. So anyway, going on, uh, I, I just think that this whole entire affair, it's WizKids trying to get us back and saying like, hey, please, please trust us. Please trust us. We, we created a bunch of things so that the game will progress. And I I feel a lot of things that they've created or going to create with this War of Light. I I am a bit concerned about just with the whole event. The the first off is that the lanterns are really late, but I guess they're like, hey, we want you to spend your money on getting the War of Light boosters, and then we want you after the events close to d- done and you're sort of burnt on War of Light, we then want you to buy these power batteries to renew your interest. Which, in my opinion, sort of sucks. That That's sort of cruel. But, okay, I, I understand. So, if you look at it, the events start in June. You have June, July, August at Gen Con. So, the end of, of your first round um, of, of War of Light stuff it's it's going to be weird because they're splitting Gen Con, which is the magical, hey, this is no longer legal sort of barrier. Then um, right after your third wave is done, you're going to go into your, I mean, after your third month is done and you're going into your second wave, then they're like, hey, lanterns, 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 homie, check it out. So that part is interesting as well. So they're they're like, okay, lanterns now when it's Christmas time, you can put a little light inside and then put it on your tree. So <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, so I I think this is just mainly there to try to milk you all the way through the rest of the year. And I, I really don't like that. But that's that's what they gotta do for their business. All right, with the time that we have left, uh, let's let's talk about uh, let's 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 talk about downtime. And uh, this is uh, Dark Logos Magical Story Time. So if you're not a fan of Dark Logos uh, Magical Story Time, uh, then just go ahead, skip to the end, and you'll hear your my normal you know spiel. So 
uh, go ahead and do that now. Okay, Dark Logo story time. Okay, gather round, uh, people of the internet, and uh, prepare to hear my tale. And uh, it's a tale of a gamer that wanted to get better. This gamer picked up the game of Hero Clicks and he said, This is fun. I got superheroes and numbers and stats, and it's all great. And he played and he played and he had fun at home. And he's like, oh, wow, I, I, I heard about these tournaments and I think I'm doing really good with the rules. Let me go out there and play other people. So he goes out and then he comes to find out at the tournament that uh, charge and flurry can go together. And running shot does not work with range combat expert. And a whole bunch of things start to crumble around this little gamer's head so he feels bad after his first tournament he's like oh wow i i i didn't win and you know i'll i'll do better i'll do better and he'll he goes home and he reads the rules some more and at work he's he's listening to podcasts about hero clicks and he's he's trying to get better and better and he's looking at maps and stuff and then the next week he builds his team and he goes out there and gets beat again and he says, shucks, on it. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I put in the work and I should be ahead. Let me go and put in another week. So he goes in, he puts in another week and then another week and then another week. And then six months pass by and he does get a little bit better. He does feel a little bit better about himself. But he doesn't seem to, to clinch those wins. And he's like, and, and he says to himself, I don't know why my brotherhood of evil mutant team just doesn't win i've i've got my tk i've got my damage i've got my outwit i got my probability control i've got everything that i should have why am i not winning and then the despair hits and the despair grabs him subtly by saying well daggone it I guess you just have to pay to win. And then the despair grabs a hold of his ankle and he says, well, I think it's those resources fault that I'm losing all the time. And then despair creeps up to his kneecap and he says, well, man, those guys, they just play cheese every week. I just, I just, you know, I'm here to have fun, you know, man, you know, I'm here to have fun and they're not here to have fun. They're here to just make it so that I have a bad time. And despair, just like the the Spider-Man symbiote, slowly takes over this gamer's body. And he eventually says to himself, you know what? I I just can't win. I just can't win. You know what? The rules are wrong. The people have wrong attitudes. People are just, you know, messed up, man. You know, I was good at home and then I got greedy and I, 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 I'm just going to go to eBay and buy what I want to buy. And then I'll play at home and then I'll have everything I want and I'll have fun. And I'll just be away from these 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 lame people because I'm good at the game and, and they just want to manipulate the fringes of the game so that. They can win. They're, they're rules lawyers. That's all they are. They're just rules lawyers. And so ends the tale of the little gamer. Now, the, the lesson of this isn't me just saying like blah, 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 casual suck. And I'm not even attempting to say that at all. But downtime is needed. Because if if you just grind, 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 grind hero clicks, and trust me, I'm f- I'm feeling it now. Working two jobs and trying to do a podcast, and actually, my computer blowing up was probably the best thing to happen to me because I just couldn't fit the editing in. But having downtime allowed me to get some perspective on some things, and it allowed me to do some other things. Cause I, you know, when windows is installing, you're just like, well, crap, I have to, you know, talk to people whilst things are going on. Cause I, you know, I ain't got anything else to do. And you start getting perspective. Uh, 
And I think what happens is most of the time despair grabs us because we're not in the place that we want to be in life, that we're not in the, you know, tactical positioning, you know, in our collection. And we don't have all these key figures and we don't have this and we don't have that. And we're we're keep being upstaged by people that we feel are are worse than we are. And it's easy to make excuses or to say, um, or or let me or create excuses or, or create reasons why we are in the state that we are at. And then the true answer isn't necessarily work harder; it's take a break. It's really take a break. And I, I don't fault anybody that's like, man, that those two weeks that you were gone, man, I. I really missed your show or or someone says, you know, those two weeks you were gone, man. I didn't even notice you were gone. You know, I listened to like five shows and then, you know, I come back when I want to, you know, that's cool. That's completely cool. But I, I think that a lot of times where people definitely are trying to get better, they just take in, you know, hero clicks like, like a, a fire hose to the mouth and then turn on the spray and then wonder why their esophagus exploded and they need to go to the hospital. It it just doesn't work like that. You, you can take in a lot of stuff. That doesn't mean you digest a lot of stuff. And the one thing that it, it sort of sucks with the podcast forum is that I can't really get your immediate feedback. Like, Hey man, do you get what I'm saying here? Like, okay, do I need to re go back over this concept? Did I skip over something? You know, uh, and, and that's where the emails come in. Uh, and, and I get a lot of emails where it's like, hey, I didn't fully understand this. Or could you break this down some more? And that's great. And I really encourage people to email me because that it does make my day uh, to know that there are people out there that are going to you know be better uh, because of the podcast that I do. But at the same time, if you hit that wall, you're just like, man, life really sucks right now. I'm not having fun playing hero clicks. Please stop for your own sake don't don't be like the little gamer and let despair creep over you because it it can and i know within my own life i am battling despair because working at target sucks helping my brother out is is great but i cut grass and i have asthma so i come home every day from working with my brother inhaling exhaust and dust and pollen and whatever the heck is out in nature and it sucks my feet hurt every day my feet hurt right now my back hurts you know um and then i go back and i spend you know eight to to ten hours at target walking on concrete and i get a day off you know maybe once every nine days to just sit and chill and i you know, I do hero clicks podcasting in the meantime, and I schedule in the meantime, and I, you know, talk with my family in the meantime, and then just all of that, you know, and I do another, I do, I do this podcast and two other podcasts. And so having everything explode for me, just like, oh, shoot. Ooh, perspective. Like there's other things. You don't have time to do a lot of things you did before. You can't game as much as you did before, but you need to find other ways to relax. And I think that's something too. like when you look at life, you start to see some things that are important and just trying to push something and push something and push something that's not moving. Maybe you just need to say like, all right, I need to take a break from pushing this. So just bringing it back to hero clicks and gaming is just I know there's a lot of people that they put in what they deem as effort and they should say I should be here. And it don't work like that. Life don't work like that. I'll I'll be honest, to get to my current state of knowledge of Heroclix, it took me eight and a half years. Eight and a half years. And you're talking about in in that period, I've been doing this show for three. And then add on the fact that if I didn't get mentored over the the Ventrilo uh, chat on 8C Realms back when they had Critical Hit Project and people would get on there and talk about Heroclix 
if it wasn't for like two guys that that would mentor me while I'm building my team and, you know, cram companies articles, there wouldn't be a show. But a lot of people would think like, oh, if I listen to all of this stuff and then I, I go and read all the forums and then I study all this stuff, I'll be a grandmaster in, in uh, you know, three to four months. No, like even, you know, some people I spend a lot of time on and work with that I've, I've put a lot of my personal time and effort in. I, I would say they are great players and they have strengths that I don't have, but they're not like grandmasters. They still make some some bad calls. There's still things in, in their sphere, sphere of understanding that's not there. And that's with me, like personally tutoring them and, and us saying, like, let's talk about tech. What do you think about this? Let's do this other thing. You know, OK, have you tried this? And them and, and me allowing them to give me feedback on their perspectives on teams that I build so I can try to diversify my thinking. You, you can't just all of a sudden be like, well, I heard all the best people talk and now I'm one of the best people. You just don't work, man. You just don't work. So I know there's a whole lot of hardcore players out there and they're and and, you know, they might be frustrated. And I know there's some people that, you know, on the come up and, and they're like, man, you know, if if I was like Dark Logos then I would be winning. No, trust me, son. If you were like Dark Logos, you would still be losing because I lose. I lose way more than I care to admit on on a recording. And heck, the Internet has two major, you know, competitions of me being in. And, and one of them, I'm losing hardcore. OK. So. You know, there's like I said, there's times just to take a break, even if it's a week, just just don't look at hero clicks. Turn off the, the 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 subscriptions to all your hero clicks, you know, shows. I know although the hero clicks podcast is like, no, don't watch my show, watch my show. But really just turn off all that hero clicks podcasting. Don't go to HC realms and live life. And you might find that when you come back that you have a better perspective of the game, better understanding of the game, what you were confused about may have gotten errated, and, you know, things will be a little bit better. All right, that ends uh, Dark Logo story time. And so uh, let's uh, wrap this up. Uh, you can uh, f- subscribe. That's sort of awesome. That's great. Uh, you can also uh, follow me on Twitter. It came from outer space. And it told me it couldn't find my drivers for half the programs on my computer and my hardware. So you can follow me on Twitter at StartOverPod. And uh, yeah, Uh, hopefully if you did follow me on Twitter, you would know that my computer blew up. (laughs) Anyway, you'll find out, you know, as soon as the show goes up. So that's awesome. You can uh, email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com if you wish to opine. Keep it pithy. Keep it interesting. Keep it awesome, baby. Tell me what happened in your AVX month four. Did you win? Did you lose? You know, what what happened? What really happened? And last but not least, you can go to the blog and donate to the show. And I know somebody, you might be saying like, oh, shoot. He, you know, some people gave the show and then he quit after his, his April Fool's joke show. Like, no, I, I didn't quit. Uh, but, yeah, if you want to donate to the show, it's much appreciated. Appreciate it. Uh, also, eh, maybe once a month now, I put up something. <laughs> but if there's something worthwhile that I, you know, it's not worth the show, but it's worth talking about and typing up, then uh, I'll put it on the blog. All right. That's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for coming back. And uh, remember, we all have to start over sometime.